Things are looking up for NASA because now they have three different options to customize the cargo shipments that are going to the International Space Station. They just announced the new round of CRS. These are the commercial resupply contracts. And there are three companies, SpaceX, Sierra Nevada Corporation, and Orbital ATK, who will be doing this labor of taking this big, big cargo up to the International Space Station. So far, the first round of contracts were able to transport 35,000 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Now, this is very important because now they're going to have so much more versatility. Before, we had to be very strategic of what we sent up. Now, because we have different vessels to go up to space, we have much more flexibility. Well, also what you're seeing here, too, is the Obama administration uh, made a statement about the fact that the U.S. is the strongest nation in the world yes. and we shouldn't be reliant on other nations to bring or to help us get to space. Correct. And so what you're seeing with these three companies is that they are all U.S. based um, and it's it's really sort of allowing freeing NASA's resources up to focus on the initiatives that they have set out, which is, you know, life or going to Mars yeah. and exploring deep space. And I think it's very important that you mention that because today still we have to hitch rides with Russia to go up to the International Space Station. They're trying to phase that out. They're trying to involve the free enterprise to make this as cheap as possible so NASA can, like you mentioned, free those resources into the deep space exploration. And this is a critical part because as soon as we are able to really supply the space station as often as needed, then we will be able to station enough astronauts that are doing these explorations deep into space, preparing to the eventual uh, arrival to Mars. But the crown of these new contracts is this new spaceship from uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation. It's amazing. It's called the Dream Chaser. And previously, it failed to become part of the commercial crew fleet. And right now, there's only a Russian uh, spaceship that is able to shuttle. It's pretty much a space taxi. This one, they were trying to crack into the market. They couldn't, so they did some modification to make it qualify for the cargo program, and they did an amazing thing. What it makes this uh, special is that it's a wing aircraft. So basically, it can land back on Earth, pretty much like the Voyager and, the, and that space program. Instead of docking uh, only, like the space uh, vessels that we use right now, this one can go back and forth in a matter of hours, which is critical for the next aspect of the space mission that it's a lot of science, a lot of animal, live animal tissue that is going to be doing tests in space and needs to be shuttled back down to the Earth as soon Very as possible quickly, because yeah. the, the live organisms, they adapt to gravity really quick and it will mess with the data. So the ability to send this back in a matter of three or four hours and be able to reuse that, that uh, space vessel, it's amazing. Well, this is also really smart on NASA's end to secure these government contracts because, yes. you know, Elon Musk and SpaceX has been doing a lot of work in commercial flight. Um, and so you're seeing these smaller organizations that aren't necessarily beholden to government regulations like NASA yeah. is, uh, and they're private, so they can go about developing these new technologies in a very, very different way, which allows NASA to sort of take advantage of their innovation and how quickly they are able to iterate on these new technologies. Because with this, uh, the Dream Chaser, you know, they weren't eligible for this program. Mm -hmm. And then they said, okay, we're gonna fall back, we're gonna take a take a beat, look at what modifications we need to make, and then boom, they're right in there, you I, know, I, the next round. I agree with you. I think this is a moment that we are really gonna see the increase of the space program in the United States really gonna move forward much quicker because I think for me, this is a matter of logistics. When we have achieved the, the feat of going to space, then we need to make it a cheap thing to do, something that is sustainable. So all of these development funds are being used for the real mission, that is get the humans into a different planet, because most likely we're going to finish this one that we live in.